Hi, this is Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. Over the past few videos, we've been restoring this ARP Quadra. In the previous videos, we tested the membrane panel, we recapped the synthesizer, changed a ton of IC chips in these upper boards, and we rebuilt all of the sliders. In this video, I'm going to show you a bit of what I've done with the touch sensor, the key bed, and the panel jacks to get the synth to where it is now, which is ready to test and work out any remaining issues. So I started with the key bed. Here's the key bed before restoration. You can hear, it's not terrible, but the, uh, the keys are pretty loud. And then we have some keys that are kind of just sticking up a little further than others. Here's the underside of the key bed for the Quadra, and you can see that there's two bus bars. One, uh, the key contact, this thin wire here, is making contact with when the key is not depressed, and the other uh, makes contact when the key is pressed. So it's a little different than the ARP Omni, but you can see that these bus bars are really, really tarnished and filthy, so they need to be cleaned in order for those little key contacts to make good electrical contact with them. Otherwise, we're going to have notes re triggering or, or not working at all. And here they are nice and shiny once they've been cleaned. So with the old bushings off, you can see actually the key that uh, was sticking up, this key on the end, is actually the closest to level key that there is. All the other ones are actually pushed down. And I usually find that even if a key bed is seemingly level, uh, the keys, particularly towards the middle of the keyboard, the key stops are bent down. Um, so the keys are, are actually not sitting as high as they should be. So we're going to go and we're going to level all of these. We're going to put new bushings on and then I'm going to clean up the keys and put them on. And uh, then we should be ready to go on the key bed. So here's just another angle to show you exactly how pushed down these ones were. These are the ones that I've leveled so far. So these are now parallel with the table that the key bed's sitting on. And you know, these are pushed down at quite a pretty extreme angle. So uh, it's a good thing that we're doing this. And here's the finished key bed. The, the keys are all level and uh, they're nice and clean now. The new bushings are installed. So pretty much all you're hearing is the key contact clicking against the newly cleaned bus bars. So I've got the touch sensor removed here and I stuck some male header pins into the connector and I've connected uh, each of those wires to the leads of my multimeter. My multimeter is set to ohms and I'm going to test out the touch sensor and see if I need to replace it or not. So right now it shows that it's an open circuit and when I press on the felt uh, I should show some resistance and the harder I press the lower the resistance should be. So. I can see I have a very high resistance. I mean, uh, we're talking, uh, this is mega ohms. If I'm just kind of giving a, a reasonable amount of pressure, if I push down as hard as I can on the left here, I got it down to about four mega ohms. Now in the center of the touch sensor bar, I'm putting a reasonable amount of pressure. I'm getting two and a half mega ohms, which is a lot less than what, what was over here. If I push down as hard as I can, I get it down to about 1.55 mega ohms. On the right side of the touch sensor bar, if I put a small amount of pressure, I'm on 10 mega ohms. If I push as hard as I can, I get it down to about well, 2 mega ohms. So it's really inconsistent as I go along this, this touch sensor bar. Um, and what that's going to mean is uh, when you're playing notes and applying aftertouch, you're going to get really inconsistent aftertouch as you move along your key bed. So this touch sensor bar needs to be replaced. Um, so I'm going to replace the actual touch sensor underneath. So I'm going to pull the felt up, put a new touch sensor in, and put the felt back down. And generally I, I replace all these touch sensors in, in quadras and in pro soloists um, that use the same aftertouch bar because invariably um, either they're not working at all or they're working really inconsistently um, or they're really weak like, like this one is. And here we've got the touch sensor bar with the new touch sensor strip installed. So now when I press on it I'm not getting resistance in the tens of mega ohms and I don't have to press with all my might to get the uh, the number down to a reasonable number. So now I'm pressing with moderate force and I'm around 820k. I'll go to the other end of it. Again, the same amount of force, right around the same resistance. Do it in the middle. 
and I'm getting pretty consistent resistances as I press with a similar amount of force all over the bar. So I have uh, was wise to replace the touch sensor strip on this. Um, it's going to perform a lot better with this installed than the old one, which barely was working according to our test. And you can get the touch sensor strip and the key bushings on my website, synthchaser.com. So I got the empty shell here, and before I put everything back together, I mentioned in the previous video that this had been stored in a road case, and the foam had kind of degraded. So uh, before we uh, put this back together, we're going to change out the XLR jack and the IEC power jack. I'll pull you in close so you can see why. So you can see that the foam kind of has uh, collected on the pins, not just the uh, outside of the jack, but on the pins of the jack itself. So this is not something that we're going to want to leave here, and it's not something that we can reasonably clean, so we're going to replace the XLR jack. So you can see the pins of the IEC jack are also looking a little blue from the road case foam. So we're going to replace this jack as well. And you can see that these old jacks are held in by pop rivets. So to get them off, we are going to drill them. It's that easy to remove pop rivets. So now I'm going to transfer this wiring over to our new XLR connector and get the uh, pop rivet remnant out of this uh, eyelet connector that gets grounded to the case. So the old IEC jack had these solder tab type connections so the uh, wires were soldered to these lugs and then heat shrinked uh, for safety. Uh, the new one I got with a quick connect tabs. I prefer the quick connect because you can actually disconnect them and um, remove stuff whereas this is just you know permanently soldered into place and you can see that we really did need to replace this jack I mean you can see how shiny the pins on the new IEC connector are and the other one is just is all rough and covered in that road case foam corrosion uh, so since I'm using a quick connect terminals um, on the old wires um, this is where it plugs into the power supply and it uses quick connect tabs there. I crimped on quick connect tabs uh, here so they'll, they'll just connect onto the jack like such and then I push it in but I'm not going to do that until I, until I actually mount this in the panel. And uh, for, for crimping these quick connect type terminals um, I use a ratcheting tool. You can hear it kind of click and ratchet uh, and it's, it's got two two places where it, it compresses um, so you get the um, insulation and the wire at the same time. You can see here that when you crimp these you need to crimp them in two places. One to pinch the wire into, uh, into the connector and the other to uh, provide strain relief by crimping onto the insulation of the wire. And there's other tools that, that you can use for that. This you'd have to crimp twice but these are absolutely miserable tools and if you can avoid using a tool like this on, on crimping something, you'll be doing yourself a huge favor. So because the old jack was held in place by pop rivets, and pop rivets do look a little more professional than uh, just screws and nuts, uh, we're going to put the new jacks in with pop rivets as well. The nuts and washers from the back panel got road case foam stuck to them and um, you know a little bit of rust from the moisture in the air. So we're going to clean these up before we reinstall them. I'm going to run the hardware through a rock tumbler with some aquarium gravel for about an hour or two and we'll see how it turns out. The rock tumbler did an okay job. I went over everything with a wire brush in a Dremel and the end result is, is pretty good. The washers came out okay and the nuts came out really good. And now we're all set to put everything back in the case, which is a little harder task than, than it seems. There's a lot of boards, a lot of connectors. So all the boards are back in. We've done a lot of uh, work to get to this point, and now it's time for the moment of truth. We're going to turn on the synthesizer and see where we stand. So fingers crossed. And 
we have program 16 lit up and the touch panel is unresponsive and we have no output. So things are not as good as I would have hoped. But we will fix this, so stay tuned for the next video where we'll troubleshoot this and get the Quadra up and running. This has been Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. Thanks for watching and have a great day.